it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Friday here on the show, and, well, usually you know what that means. It's Friday here on the show. But today we have a very special show because I will be joined by two co-hosts today. Mike Sempervivi, as always, and, yes, filthy Tom Lawler, who actually we were all unable to do the show on Monday I had a dentist appointment. Tom was still traveling. Just didn't work out. So today, it will be myself and Tom and Mike Sempervivi. And we'll talk some news. And I know that Tom and Mike, and of course myself as well, really want to talk about this stardom show coming up this weekend. And we'll talk about the return of CM Punk. And maybe, maybe, because you know this, you know it sounds like a lot of fun here today? Opening up the phone lines for a QA. and a Filthy Tom Lawler and myself. And if anyone has any questions for Mike, you can ask those as well. So we'll see what happens here today. But yes, we have to talk about CM Punk. New Observer reports that he is currently scheduled to return to AW at the United Center in Chicago on Saturday, June 17th. And we'll have a lot more on that as we get going on the show here today. Dynamite on a Wednesday. We'll talk about the ratings for that show. 830,000 viewers in a point two eight. Talk about Mercedes and Trinity, the former Naomi, who, according to The Observer, is not in New Japan or stardom right now due to pressure to keep spending down within Bushi Road's wrestling division. So a lot to get into here today. If you want to text us in the meantime, it is 425-780-7566. That is 425-780-7566. Brian at WrestlingObserver.com is the email. At Brian Elbers on Twitter, at Sempervivi, at Filthy Tom Lawler. Check it out back in a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also at WrestlingObserver.com. I got these blokes talking all over the music. I had to mute them, so go ahead. Say your pleasantries, everybody. Yes, Tom? Hey, Mike, what's going on? Hey, Brian, how's it going? Hello to all the listeners out there. Look at how short I'm very Tom happy is to us. be here on Friday, April 21st, 2023. Wow. Great. I was saying hi to Tom because I'm not getting a return on his video feed right now, so I wasn't sure if he was having technical difficulties. Well, don't yell at me. I see him. There ain't much to see. For some reason, his camera is is focusing mostly on no. the wall. No, there is and, something and to so, see. So, like, the two of us are normal height, and he's this tiny little man. <laughs> what <laughs> well, are you talking about? That's usually my role, is it not? But there was anyway. something I wanted to see Sit back, Tom. Here. We'll figure it out. Just sit and get comfortable. Yeah. Well, turn to the camera. I, I have to see here how your face is, because we hear all about Brian's trials and tribulations when it comes to going to the dentist, but you actually had your tooth punched through your cheek or kicked through your cheek by Zack Sabre Jr. How are you? That's not exactly what happened. What happened, well, Tom? Yeah, you can see if you can get a close up there. There's a so well what appears to be a puncture wound of I... sorts in my mouth uh, during the contest with Zack Sabre Jr. A four and a quarter star wrestling match if I've ever seen one last Saturday at uh, New Japan Capital Collision, I went for a spear in the corner, and uh, somehow, despite having a mouthpiece in, um, either the mouthpiece or my tooth, punctured through to the other side of my face, uh, and like filleted the inside of my mouth, but I kept fighting on as a former, any former champion would, and I'm here today. So, so you're telling me that you had a mouth guard in, which is yes. designed to protect your mouth, and you ended up being filleted. He had it in back like a fillet of fish. That's what you're telling me. <laughs> Golly. Yeah. Well, you know, we talked in the past about everyone wants to Give wear me a that cup, fish. but man, if you get kicked wrong with that cup, it'll rip your, you know, what off. We've all heard that, right? And it's not even ripping that whole thing off. That's it's why just I never wore a having cup. it crushed back into your future kids are you talking about the kyoji horiguchi all i know is i never wore a mouthpiece and now i wear a mouthpiece all the time hey better than the gary goodridge story in, in pride <laughs> all right listen you guys can can ramble about non-important things later but first off cm punk's aw return may be taking place at the same venue where his career for the promotion began 
Latest edition of the Observer Newsletter, Dave reported, Punk is currently scheduled to return to AW at the United Center in Chicago Saturday, June 17th. Things have yet to be finalized, but the United Center is booked, and an announcement could come shortly. They booked the building for Saturday, June 17th, the United Center in Chicago. So I think that barring some disaster, and I do not rule out a disaster, this will be the debut of CM Punk and the the debut of the Saturday Night Show, likely to be named AEW Collision. And uh, we don't know any of the details until it's finalized, but... You know, I've, I've I've heard different things about the Saturday Night Show. Early on, it was it was uh, rumored to be an hour show, and of late, I've been hearing that it might be a two-hour show. So I guess you know we'll find out soon enough. But uh, the building has been booked, and I believe that uh, tickets are going to be going on sale. And there will be there will be a theme name for this show. I have been told, and uh, we do know Dave wrote. He was extremely important in this deal, but whether the deal was incumbent on him, we have heard both ways. One person outside the company has seen correspondence indicating WBD definitely wanted him back, and other things that have happened in recent weeks very much behind the scenes have indicated to us that Punk being back is, if nothing else, very significant in everything. Now, uh, the big question that everybody is asking, so don't turn me into the bad guy here, the big question is, What if something goes wrong again? What if something goes wrong again and CM Punk leaves? What does this mean for the show, for all of it? I mean, presumably the show must go on. But, I mean, given everything that went down, I mean, it seems like that's that's an awfully big leap to state that without Punk, the show cannot take place. But... Uh, he obviously is is a very important part of it. United Center, that's the uh, that's the debut show. He'll be there presumably, and uh, they'll also be in Chicago June twenty first, which is Wednesday at the Wintrust Arena. And we've talked a lot about the uh, all the rumors about this show. So I'd presume that sometime in the next week or so, we're going to uh, we're going to find out a lot more. Start with you, Tom. Any thoughts on all of this? Let's dance, baby. I am so excited to see CM Punk come back to wrestling and just see what happens. I mean, I come where I spent, you know, years in a business where getting into a fist fight with somebody, um, you know, not exactly frowned upon in my line of work. And a lot of to be clear, of, you're talking UFC and not your independent professional wrestling career. Correct. I'm speaking of my past in mixed martial arts. And uh, well, there's been like in pro wrestling, there's been a history of disagreements between people that were way, way worse than this. I mean, we had a guy get stabbed with scissors. I mean, and, and then later on, you know, they're both still working for the same company, I believe. You know, I mean, this is like. I understand you don't want to go to work and hate everybody you work with. You don't want to go to work and get run down verbally by your co-workers and co-hosts, by your other wrestlers. But, I mean, this is far from the worst thing that's ever happened backstage in wrestling. And, uh, you know, I I think it adds a a big level of intrigue that – is going to be a shot in the arm for AEW, at least for a short term. Hmm. I understand what Filthy's saying there, but it's a different era with different type of guys and a whole different type of corporate situation that we've got going on here. And you know what? Feelings do matter, actually, you know, and your happiness at your job does matter. And on one side, there are two guys who don't seem to want have anything to have anything to do with CM Punk right now in the Young Bucks that feel as though, you know what? This company is here because of us. This is our company. And look, there is a lot that needs to be hashed out here, obviously, with the parties involved. I don't see this being beneficial long term. It's definitely going to be beneficial short term. That's for sure. So can you juice everything you can out of it before we get another situation where guys can't work together? But to what Filthy was saying, 
it probably can all be worked out. You know, you don't have to love the person that you're working with. Yes, the fight did happen. You know, and again, it comes down to emotions because looking at this from the outside, hearing for years, I'm, I'm 47 years old, there have been fights in football locker rooms, wrestling locker rooms, all sorts of things, tons of things that, you know, a lot of people never really even hear about. You know, these things can absolutely be mended for business sake. It's just with that said for how long because if it's constantly going to orb and have this issue of tension you know it can work short term but sooner or later that bubble's going to burst this brawl happened in september october november december january february march april it's been seven months okay and i know that people say it can be worked out and i'm sure it could but given we're seven months away from everything this thing ain't going to be worked out Okay, but, but, as we have talked about, there's there's been discussions of of split crews. Okay, whatever you want to call it, brand split, soft brand split, split crew, whatever. He'd be on one show, they'd be on the other show. Okay, so if that happens, I'll be Mr. Positivity. Okay, there's two possibilities here. One, they stay on their show, he stays on his show, everything works out great. Okay, or the other option is that they stay on their show. He goes to his show. Something goes wrong. He leaves. It's done. That's it. That's the only two options, right? It's either it's going to work out one way or the other. It's either going to work out because the plan is going to go according to plan. And if the plan doesn't go according to plan, it's all over. Yeah, but you know what? There's a caveat to that that we can get to when we come back from break. Because if it works out for one side and not the other when it comes to ratings and attention, is that going to now cause a bunch of tension with people wanting to go back and forth to different shows or something like that? I don't know what's going to happen, bro. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. The show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semper, Bibi, and Tom Lawler. Bro, you know what I had to hear during the break? I have a grudge against CM Punk because of my oh, re- yeah? reporting of all of this. I have a grudge because of the statement that he might not end up happy and leave. That's a grudge now. That's not looking at the history of his career. Come on, people. Now, come on, Get with exactly. the program. Jeez. Jiminy Christmas. You know what's Steel funny? Steel that's got the grudge against Punk. You know what's funny? You know what's funny? Someone brought this to my attention, and they're right. You know what's lost in all of this argument about the brawl and this and that and the Young Bucks and who should have gone and should they have gone and who did they super kick the door down and all of this? Forget, forget, forget the fight, okay? Pretend the fight never happened. Why were the Young Bucks and the head of legal... Going to the room in the first place. Huh? Why? See, a Buck told him to go talk to him. Well, he actually did say that his door was open if anybody wanted to talk. <laughs> yes. But the reason this whole thing, oh. even, the reason all of this even happened was because he did a press conference where he spent a half hour burying all of his co-workers. So... Even if there, next to him. even if there hadn't even been a fight, do you guys see that this train was going off the tracks? Even if there hadn't been a fight, so it is not holding a grudge. It is not picking a side. To note that this guy, throughout his career, has become exceedingly disgruntled on multiple occasions. He's walked out of places before so no saying that you know what if he comes back and he doesn't like things he might leave again that's not holding a grudge that's telling you a fact let me ask you a question yes do you believe he was justified with the wwe deal with with everything that went down with the medical and all that stuff yes hey listen probably <laughs> probably but I wasn't there. Yeah, and you know okay. what? You know what? There's a lot of details about what happened at Brawl Out. And his story is quite different from what happened. So I don't know. I presume he was justified. But he's coming back. And there's another thing when it comes to the legal aspect of this, too. And look, this is hopefully for their sake, for Tony Khan's sake. Because, again, it's going to take a lot 
you know, for me, again, I go back to that thing. I've hired and fired people. I've had to learn things on the job. I've had to have situations where I slipped on a banana peel and been called out on it by somebody that is supposed to be a subordinate, you know, somebody that I'm paying. But Tony Khan sitting there having to, and he ate all of that. And I don't know if I give him credit for it. I don't know. I mean, he was just in shock, obviously, the whole time where Punk is doing this. But look at, again, the, and I know, it, look, when you look at, I mean, I'm talking about everything here, the hangman thing and, and what he did to Punk, the videos that were made, the mockings that were done after the fact, Brandon Cutler talking, CM Punk putting out a post, like, that's the most worrisome part to me is now we're getting close to where this guy is going to come back and we still have jawing online. And that's one of the biggest problems of the whole thing is, can they control? I mean, again, you're talking about whether this thing's going to blow up or not. I mean, can they even control it for long enough where they can get everybody on the same page to go, you know what, when it comes to your social media, shut up. Maybe that's happened recently. I don't know. But, like, that needs to be a thing where everybody has got to stop getting their opinions and their thoughts out online and making the company, whether they mean it or not, look completely junior high or at the very least, just look bad. Does does Tony Khan, and this is a legit question, Mike, you'd probably have the best answer, but does Tony Khan not have to deal with this stuff when it comes to the Jaguars and football? I mean, you know, maybe we're shortchanging him on how accustomed he is to dealing with all these look. different kinds of personalities who, you know, and, and it's something, in, it happens in wrestling, but people, uh, wrestlers are often just buried if they question authority but in sports you can question the coach you can question management you can do that and still be in the public eye still make a lot of money and still be with that team and be forced to work with people you don't like so maybe you know maybe we got to give tony khan more credit than he's been getting in dealing with all these multiple types of personalities the, the fact that he hasn't lost it completely dealing with all of this stuff that's going on for somebody who's basically first time doing this stuff and dealing with these types of things it's easy but, to be on the outside know people and go i you know i have a handle a little bit on the wrestling business like no you don't unless you have to deal with dudes all the time for an extended period it's tough and he doesn't have to do that directly with the jaguars now you know anything when it comes to the rules and all that sort of stuff because mega was in charge over there i assume that that handbook basically got passed over to aew i don't know that for sure as far as him dealing directly with talent i believe he did have to do that at least at one time with fulham initially which again there's somebody who can speak far better on that than me but i know that they ended up getting basically like a player personnel a you know a, a, again a a head of talent relations basically for soccer to basically take his place if i'm not mistaken so i'm sure he's got some experience in this stuff but this is tough i mean this is a tough thing you know he's learning on the fly with everything so yes tom you were going to jump in and you stopped i stopped for a reason what's that my point is no longer valid mike continued on so there you go <laughs> You know, sometimes it's be just better to say nothing. All right. You no, know, Brian. I can see you on the company. Give me a heads up here. Give me a high sign here. Brian just usually kind of rolls over like this, makes all sort of histrionic motions and everything. That's how no, I, I don't. I up. sit here you, and I let you talk. You, Tom was going right. like this. Mike's, <laughs> Mike's awake. That's your high sign. What? Wednesday night's Dynamite averaged 830,000 viewers on TBS, down 4.2% from last week. Lowest total audience for the show since February 15th. Second lowest of 2023, 18 to 49.28. Same as last week. Dynamite's lowest rating since March 15th. Fifth lowest rating of the year to date. This, of course, uh, I don't even think I've tweeted this yet. Maybe I shouldn't even bother. But anyway, it was uh, aired live on the West Coast which is uh, going to hurt the rating 5 10% or so um, because of the United States versus Mexico soccer game. I also aired head-to-head -head against the NBA playoffs on TNT and the NHL playoffs on ESPN. There, I moved on from CM Punk. Everybody happy? All right. With questions swirling as to Mercedes Monet's contract and her future with New Japan and stardom, there has been, yes, Tom, that was a heaving, heaving sigh. Is there something you'd like to tell us? 
Sometimes it's best to be quiet. All right. According to Dave Meltzer in this week's Observer Newsletter, Trinity is not in New Japan or stardom yet due to pressure to keep spending down within Bushiroad's wrestling division. The hard part about a longer commitment is that Bushiroad's wrestling division, even though stardom has grown greatly, has overall taken a major financial hit because of New Japan's declines related to the pandemic, even with New Japan World Up. The wrestling division is under pressure to keep spending down. An example is they were told they could bring in Trinity, but it was felt it would cost too much for the return, and thus they have not made the deal. So money, that's what they're saying. Coincidentally. Coincidentally. (laughs) Coincidentally. Look, so anyway, never, the guy in the chat that said he was going to watch the Stardom pay-per-view this weekend via other means, don't do that. Don't Buy do the it. pay-per-view, spend the money, and then, you know, people can get paid. At the very least, wait three days or whatever it is, and you'll be able to have it up on Stardom World. Pay a lot less and get it that way, you know? Come on. If, if you got it to spend on this, you got it to spend on that. Support those people. If you really like the show and you can do it, support those people. It's going to be an awesome their money show. Back on Kyrie, or they're not making their money back on Sasha. That were Mercedes, that's for sure. Yeah, hey, you excited for this show, Tom? I am excited for this show. The biggest women's wrestling show in Japan in decades, some are saying. And uh, top of the card, of course, you talked about Mercedes Monet taking on uh, <clears throat> Mayu Iwatani for the IWGP women's belt. Also, you have... Julia defending against Tam Nakano. Saya Kamatani taking on Mina Shirakawa. And I've got to believe, I've got to think if there's going to be one title change on this show, that's the one. And then you also have the New Eras, who I hope will win the stardom tag belts. And there's just awesome stuff up and down that card. Sunday at the uh, Yokohama Arena. So uh, Tom and I are going to be reviewing the top match on that show on Monday. Isn't that right, Tom? Yes, 100%. I knew about that before that very moment that you just spoke. Excellent. (laughs) Brian, what match are you most looking forward to on the show? I don't know. Julia. She's my favorite wrestler. Oh, yeah, really? She's a lot of people's. Yeah. Julie is your favorite wrestler. Maybe not in all, not in all of wrestling. He wants to get headbutted by Julie. She's, she's way up there. Hey, I got beat up. What are you what? angry because she uh, her team beat your team? Is that the problem? No, I'm her and no. Zach. No. I'm not talking to you, him. Mike. I'm talking to him. Oh, come on. I lived out. Her team didn't beat your team. You didn't even wrestle. I lived out many DM, men's man. dreams there. I got beat up by Ali Kaba in a match where they weren't even teaming. Right. Didn't even Man. have to pay extra for it. Golly. Anything else? Shuri and Hashimoto. Well, listen, we're going to head to a break. Tom will keep rattling off names when we go to break. <laughs> and then I'm going to open up the phone Restart. lines. Restart. For a fun day. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Elber is here. <clears throat> God, I wish I could hear the comeback music. Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Simper, BB, also of WrestlingObserver.com. If you want to text us. We're doing phone calls and text messages. 425-780-7566 is the text message line. If you want to send us a text, 425-780-7566. If you want to call, which is different, 844-913-2727. That's to call. 844- what if they want to use sign language, Brian? 913 Do not use that service. 844-913. <laughs> T-T-Y, 2727. Can I? 844 913 2727. Got it, everybody? Look, we already got people on the line. Look at how fast that was. But before I go to the phones, this person here says With it appearing more likely that Punk will be on Saturday and Elite on Wednesday, is this honestly sustainable in the long run? Well, if it's just TV and you get flown to one city and then the other people get flown to the other city, and you just show and you go home, then it should be sustainable forever in theory. The problem is when it is not TV. What is going to happen when there is a pay-per-view? Are we going to have to alternate pay-per-views with each of these crews? Are they going to be in the same building for pay-per-views? I mean, I don't have the answer to that question. I guess we will find out. That, to me, is the biggest question 
for all of this. What happens during a pay-per-view when they all conceivably need to be in the building together? I guess we shall see. Everybody gets the Mike Awesome uh, returning to ECW treatment. I don't know if that's sustainable long term. All right, let's go to Cincinnati. You're on the air. What's going on? Hey, Brian. Hey, Mike. Hey, Tom. Uh, nice to hear from you guys today. Uh, this is Matthew from Nashville now. Uh, just a quick question. Uh, seeing Bleacher Report had reported last week that Vince had sent out an email to the company saying that uh, Triple H was solely in charge of creative and he would no longer be involved. Just wanted to know if you guys could add any context to that, and do you think that that might be why we've seen the shows improve much since the uh, Raw after Mania? Thank you. Well, I want to thank you very much for the call. I mean, Vince can say whatever he wants, but I don't trust the guy. But I will say that the Raw after WrestleMania, when he was there, and they did redo the show like three times, the show was awful. And the SmackDown after WrestleMania, and then the following week's Raw and SmackDown, and this week's Raw, they're all essentially back to being what they were before WrestleMania. So I'm sure that he's doing stuff. I'm sure that he's in there. But he is not running the show now like he was prior to July or whatever. I mean, it's still largely a Triple H show with him doing some stuff here or there. The Raw after WrestleMania at this point was an aberration. But uh, that could change literally at any moment. Could change tonight for SmackDown. If you're looking for somebody that has those type of scoops, Matthew, I would uh, recommend you check out Louis Dangor on Twitter. Thanks, Tom. Um, yeah, I forgot. You're what I'm welcome for the platform. <laughs> yes, Mike. Um, he's always had the ability to eavesdrop because they had that set up where Stanford could watch what was happening at NXT. Whether he ever did that or not, I don't know. It was mostly a Triple H thing. But since he was gone, I'm sure he called. I'm sure he tried to, you know, again, he was away. And how much interest he has on doing things day to day, I don't know. But if he's sending in things like about Otis or something like that, I mean, I can absolutely see that. But him there every day, it doesn't look like that's going to be a thing or every show and good. Oh, this person here texted from a 206 area code. I hope Mercedes re-signs for double the money. Okay, let's go to the phones. You're on the air, Fayetteville. Who is this and where are you calling from? Hey, guys, it's John from Arkansas. How's oh. everything going, Brian? Oh, it's going great. You did it I to yourself, I think that Val. the best answer for the AEW thing with the CM Punk and the two camps is to split them up, put them on the two different shows, and let We'll go from there and see how everything goes. I have some questions for Mike and for Tom specifically. Uh oh. Uh, the first one will be for Tom. Uh, I'm curious of the current roster in New Japan and the current roster in NOAA if a crossover is done, whom that you have not worked with yet would you like to work with currently? Oh. And my question for Mike is going to be simply, do you think that the big co-promoted show between All Japan, New Japan, and NOAA is in trouble with the Tanahashi thing? All right, let's start with you, Filthy. Yeah, John, uh, the uh, cross-promotion between New Japan and NOAA, and also the cross-promotion between NOAA and All Japan, I think has been some of the best stuff that I've seen in wrestling this year. And I would love uh, to see more interaction between the two groups, whether it's Okada continuing his feud with Kiyomiya, or even if it was something like Filthy Tom Lawler taking on Sakuraba in a GHC rule, martial arts rules match. Maybe Filthy Tom against uh, Funaki in a GHC martial arts rules match. Hell, maybe Filthy Tom against a guy who's really not so good looking, if you ask me. And that's old Jake Lee. Look at this face. A lot prettier than that one. Uh but I will say uh, there's two guys I'm not really interested in wrestling, and uh, that's Keno and uh, Nakajima. You can draw your own conclusions as to why. 
I've only got a well, few brain cells left. What about smacking left. around Dr. Wagner Jr. Jr.? How about that and taking that national title? Hey, if it gets me in the ring with Galino Del Mal, I'll take out El Hijo Del Dr. Wagner Jr. That's a, and let me give you the uh, the long and short answer, John, for Tanahashi. No. It, it, yeah, you lose star power with him not being there, but it's not going to matter at the end of the day. All right, let's go to beautiful St. Louis, Missouri. You're on the air. What's going on? Going once, buddy. Going twice. How's it going, Brian? Oh, hey, what's up? It's going pretty good. Uh, I just got a question for you, Brian. Basically, do you think it's a good idea for them to do all, um, all out after all in? Well, listen, that's a great question. I want to thank you very much for the call because I don't know if they're going to do all out and all in. We we don't know yet. But but uh, all out weekend is always like that for last week of August, first week of September. And this Wembley show is the week prior. And, you know, Dave has said repeatedly he doesn't know if this is going to be a pay-per-view. And to me, if you're running your biggest show in history and you're trying to sell out Wembley... And in order to sell out Wembley, you're going to put all of your biggest matches on that show. Like, the only way, the only way that you don't run pay-per-view is if WBD said, you know, we'll give you $20 million or whatever for, you know, to air this live on television or whatever. I, I don't know what the deal is, okay? If it is if it is a, a TV special of some sort, then, yeah, you could shoot some big angles for a pay-per-view the following weekend. If it's a pay-per-view, I don't think the idea of doing back-to-back pay-per-views is a good idea at all. So I don't know what they're going to do. I mean, ideally, it would be a television special where WBD pays them a bunch of money and then a pay-per-view the following weekend, uh, capitalizing on the momentum of that. But I'm not sure which way they're going to go yet. Let's not mince words. The Bleacher Report app has been a bag of crap since its very beginning. It has been horrible and September begins the fall season. Everything is moving towards fall, the upfronts, all that sort of stuff, including the remixing of HBO Max. So, boy, would that be the perfect event for WBD since they obviously have a real interest on what's going on with AEW, you know, that that be one of the shows that they offer probably for the first time for a purchase live streaming through that app. You know, I think that would probably be the way they would go on top of traditional pay-per-view. Otherwise, again, like Brian said, unless you're getting a ton of money, you're leaving a ton of money out there. It doesn't make any sense. Well, let's go to Austin, Texas. Beautiful Austin, Texas. You're on the air. What's going on? Hey, nothing. Hey, Brian. Hey, uh, Mike. Hey, Filthy. Shout out to Twitch homies. I just want to get uh, Filthy's opinion. Uh, where does Kaito Kimia's title reign rank on the Rey Mysterio of total jobber champs? Uh, <laughs> Adam Summers asked you know this what? question? You know what? After after that loss uh, to Jake Lee, I'm going to put that Kaito Kiyomiya title reign uh, with, like, the Firebreaker chip uh, U.S. tag title win back in the day yeah what the hell happened there where is adam summers right now at a cubs game and they're winning right now beating the dodgers but uh yeah i mean <laughs> kia Mia's reign the whole thing with muda all the all, everything that has happened it looked like it was going to be kind of a dominant reign and then you have the okada thing and i know they're going to build him back up it's just at this point i don't know i i have Dude. i would far rather see I'd rather see Jake Lee succeed and then be on to some new cool thing than what they've been doing in the past. They shot that angle with him and Okada, and it was awesome. And then they build up that big champion versus champion match. And, you know, I had these ideas. Oh, you know, what if what if Okada loses? And then, you know, uh, Kiyomi can challenge him for the IWGP title in a New Japan show, and then Okada wins. You know, there's all these things you could do. It said Okada walks in. He wipes the floor with this guy. And, like, it was like 14 minutes, wasn't it? It was short. He just beat yeah. him like a geek. And then it was like a week later, uh, Kiyomiya lost the title. I was like, what in God's name happened here? Yeah, what happened? 
Brian, one thing, though, that you're discounting is the love of the Japanese fans for stuff like this. Take a look. And I can tell you from being over there firsthand, there is tension Nasakawa merchandise all over the place, everywhere. And what is he, you know, almost most notably known for in the Western world? Going out there and getting waxed and crying after getting beat up by Floyd Mayweather. So you have to look at the uh, some of the cultural differences when you look at this. Although, in retrospect, you know, I did think Kiyomiya was going to get a longer title reign. I thought he would be built up to look strong even in the face of defeat against Okada, but that was not the case. Hey, Tom, one fantasy booking thing there for you. Because Yuji Nagata still is the IWGP champion and... There's going to be a lot more co-promotion going on. Can you give him a win so he actually, you know, have him win the 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 triple crown from Nagata? Because again, he hasn't looked good. You know, he's not in the mix with Miyahara right now. He's down a peg because of everything that's happened, and he's two down from Okada. So, you know, could you do something that way and have him in the mix by taking their title off of Nagata? I want to do it. I think that the smart bet is to set up uh, Aoyagi. Itsuki Aoyagi. Yeah, for the belt. Um, and I think putting it on Kiyomiya would just be like, a, you know, taking taking the heat away from him and his eventual win. Uh, you could always, you know, like obviously Keto Miyahara is, I think, one of the top five professional wrestlers in the world i just love watching him so you can always put the belt back on him but i mean he's had it so many times that i think you've got to look to switch it uh over to one of the younger guys and it could be nomura it could be a yogi and uh, that's who i'd go with frazier says ask tom to think about being more selfish when it comes to dropping falls he loses too much hmm. back in a moment observer live memorial day weekend Meet and greet, Q&A, sweet party, Texas Day Brazil, F4WOnline.com slash Vegas to get your tickets now. Do not miss out. It's going to be quite a quite a fun time. And I hear you're wrestling that weekend, Tom. Is that right? That's right. Saturday evening. Not only am I wrestling, Brian, it's filthy Tom Lawler's natural born killers at the FSW Arena, 1030 p.m. Wow. So you're going to be in Vegas? You're going to hang out with all of us? All of am us, I head-to-head uh, with the sweet party? Because if I am... Just go to the sweet party afterwards. Sweet party doesn't start until like 10. Bring the killers. I, ju- I just said my show's at 1030. So why, do- why doesn't the sweet party come to me? I mean, maybe we'll, we'll show up there yeah, and say hi. There you go. But uh, you're... you're, you're uh, now you're going head-to-head, dude. So... Uh, I just said that. That's going to hurt your, uh, your drawing power, I'm afraid. Because we're going to have a sweet party. At night. A sweet, sweet party. Right, yeah. Brian? Yeah. They can go to both. You know? <sighs> Who's cooler? You or me? Well, it's not me only at the sweet party. There's a lot of cool people at the sweet party. <laughs> now, when so. does the sweet party end? Because, I mean... Dude, it don't wrestling. end, brother. It don't oh, end. It don't so end you, until it ends. If the show, everybody can go to the show and about, what, 1 o'clock local time? Dude, I'll be, I'll be out of there by 1 o'clock, let me tell you. Uh, you. I'm an old man. You. Yeah. God, I don't stay up till four a.m. and party anymore. Are you kidding me? I got hey, kids. I heard I, I heard a rumor they're going to start closing down those balconies on the Cosmo. So, this oh could really? Be the last, yeah, because uh, we people got, jumping. Yeah. No, F one. I think they're worried about F one uh, coming to Vegas and people overloading the balconies. So I Ooh. see. Huh? Hmm. How about could that? be the last time. Well, you better go to the sweet party, everybody. F four W online dot com slash Vegas. Plunk. Go to our Q and A gonna be a lot of fun and that's it thanks tom thanks mike callers and listeners twitch homies everybody in the studio callers we'll talk to you next time wrestling observer live